Well, that is good to hear. Is this anybody's first time on safaris? <laughs> Couple people. Well, we take a moment and look above our heads. That is the animal spotting guide. Now that'll point out some of the animals that we will be seeing today. Now we probably will not see all of them, but we will see a good majority of them. Now this is a photo safari, so please feel free to take as many pictures as you all would like. It does get pretty bumpy out there, however, so make sure we are remaining seated at all times. Now, as soon as we get that all clear from the warden, we will be on our way. It should be any moment now. Are there any animals you all are looking forward to seeing out there today? Elephant, gator, rhino. That all clear, so we are good to go. Now, my name is Shelby Kay, and I will be your safari driver here today. We're going to get started here in the Little Itchery Forest. Now, animals over here tend to use camouflage to blend into their surroundings, so let's see what we can find. Straight up ahead of us, laying down, those are the bongos. They are known as the ghosts of the forest. Their horns are pushed back like that to help them run throughout the brush. Also on the left, standing up over here, we have some greater kudu. We can tell that they are females because they don't have any horns. Males' horns will grow to be about six feet in length. On the right-hand side, we have the okapi. Now, the okapi has markings that are very similar to that of the zebra. But they're actually closer related to the giraffe. They have a very similar bone structure. Now, they are very reclusive animals. So reclusive, in fact, that they were not discovered by Westerners up until 1901. Up until then, they were thought to be a myth. On the left, keep a lookout for the black rhino. He is about 3,000 pounds. Will be a very, very cool if we do see one today because they are critically endangered. There's only about 5,000 left in the entire world. Now they are being poached for their horns. Their horns are made up of keratin, which is the same material that our hair and fingernails are made up of. So those horns are worth virtually nothing. And it looks like we can see him over there on the left on top of that hill. Let's see if we can get a better look at him. So over here on the left, those big birds are called the saddle-billed stork. They will stand at about five feet tall. Males will have brown eyes, females will have bright yellow ones. And when they do mate, they will mate for life. Uh, next, we're headed on into the Safi River. Now, the Safi River is home to more of our aquatic animals, such as the Nile crocodile and the hippo. These birds on the right are called the pinkback pelicans. They get their name because during mating season, their backs will turn pink. Their wingspan is about nine feet in length, which is about the length of the canopy that is above our heads. Now, hippos tend to spend a majority of the day in the water. They normally will only come out at night to graze. Now, a group of hippos is called a bloat. They can normally hold their breath for up to eight minutes, at which point in time they will rise to the top, take a big gulp of air, and then sink right on down to the bottom. Another fun fact is that hippos cannot swim. They will sink to the bottom and just walk across it. Now, when first born, a baby hippo will weigh about 85 pounds. A hippo pregnancy is around eight months. We do have a baby hippo that is out here on the reserve. She actually celebrated her first birthday this month. So hopefully we'll be able to see her today. 
And actually, keep a lookout right back there in that back corner, kind of next to that waterfall. We do have some of those females back there, and it looks like we do have that baby back there as well. They're a little hard to see, but they kind of look like giant rocks back there. Now, also on the left, we have the Nile crocodiles. They tend to keep their mouths open to help themselves cool down. They're about 16 feet in length, which is about as long as a giraffe is tall. Now, despite their mean demeanor, they're actually great parents. They will normally roll their eggs around in their mouth, that way making it easier for them to crack, and that way it makes it a lot easier for when the babies hatch. And a majority of their diet consists of fish. We're now going to be headed on into the savannah. Now, the savannah is home to more of our famous animals such as the giraffe, the zebra, and the wildebeest. But before we head on out there, if we take a moment and look on the right-hand side of the vehicle, that kind of funny looking tree, almost looks like an upside down tree. Well, that is a baobab tree. Now, baobab trees are leafless about nine months of the year. Their trunks can hold up to 10,000 gallons of water, and that actually gives them the nickname, the Tree of Life. Now, as we come around this corner, we're gonna wanna take a look over there on the left-hand side, because that is where predators tend to hang out. They normally like this cave that's up ahead of us, so we'll see if there is anything that is out and about at the moment. Okay, and there is, looks like they're back there on that right hand side of the cave. These are the African wild dogs, also known as the African painted dogs. Now they have four toes. They have a very high stamina. They will normally chase their prey until they collapse in exhaustion. And their success rate is about 91%. I would not want to mess with them. See a couple right back there in that cave. Also on the left, we have the sable antelope. They are very aggressive, very territorial. In a fight or flight scenario, they will almost always choose to fight. These structures coming up on the left and on the right hand side of the vehicle are called termite mounts. Now some of our taller animals like the giraffe and the elephant will actually use them as a scratching post. But once they get worn down, some of our smaller animals like the springbok will actually use them as a perch in which to look out for predators. Over here on the left we can see one of the Maasai giraffe. Now we can tell that she is a Maasai because of the messy pattern. They'll normally grow to be about 20 feet tall. They spend about 18 hours of the day eating. They only sleep about 30 minutes. So when they do sleep, they will sleep standing up to avoid predators. Over here on the right, we have the Hartman Mountain Zebra. Now a group of zebra is called a Dazzle. Now, no two zebra actually have the exact same pattern. They're about as unique as a fingerprint. They actually have enough strength in their hind legs that they're able to break a fully grown lion's jaw. They are very powerful animals. We actually have two of those baby zebras that are out here on the reserve. They are both girls. They are both born back in June. Normally a zebra pregnancy takes about a year when first born. A baby zebra will weigh about 55 pounds. Normally those baby zebras are up and walking within the first 15 minutes that they are born. Will normally imprint on their mothers in that same time frame as well. Now these smaller animals coming up over here on the right are called the springbok. They get their name because they like to spring about six feet up in the air. They can leap up to 13 feet forward. And when they do that, that is called pronking. While they are pronking, their body actually emits a cotton candy smell. 
straight up ahead closer to that uh, tree uh, we can see a Patterson's eland they will stand at about six feet at the shoulder they can jump eight feet up in the air from a standstill position they are the largest of the antelopes also right over here in this clearing and on top of that hill these are the white bearded wildebeest they have a very high population right second only to humans at night they will sleep in rows like that from all different directions that way they're able to keep their eyes peeled for predators another cool fact is they will learn all the surrounding animals warning calls that way if a predator does surface they're able to alert one another now a giraffe's heart is about 25 pounds, two feet across. They can reach speeds of up to 40 miles per hour. Giraffe pregnancy is about 14 months, at which point in time the giraffe will give birth in a standing position. So one of the first things that a baby giraffe will experience is a six foot fall to the ground. But despite that, they are up and walking within that first hour that they are born. Giraffe's tongue is about 21 inches long, long enough that if they wanted to, they could lick their own eyeballs. Pretty crazy stuff. A group of giraffes called a tower, so I guess a scared group of giraffe would be considered a tower of terror. <laughs> and up next, we're headed on into elephant territory. But first, keep a lookout on the left for the mandrels. Now, when fully grown, a mandrel is about 100 pounds. Their colors will become more prominent if they are excited or angry. Well, I'm not seeing any of the male elephants at the moment, but I do know a shortcut to where some of the females like to hang out. So we'll head over in that direction next. Should be able to spot a couple of them out here today. a couple more signs of elephant activity there are some footprints over here in the mud and there are some tusk marks in that red clay now elephants will eat the red clay it gives them vitamins and nutrients that they don't normally receive in their everyday diets elephants will eat about 350 pounds of vegetation daily then they will wash that down with at least 40 gallons of water now an elephant pregnancy is about two years when first born a baby elephant is about 200 pounds we actually do have a baby elephant that is out here on the reserve. She celebrated her sixth birthday earlier this year. It was on January 4th. Now, in comparison, a fully grown adult elephant can be anywhere between 9,000 to 13,000 pounds. The average lifespan of an elephant is around 80 years. Now we can actually tell that these are females because there are more than one. Normally male elephants tend to leave home when they get to be about 13 years old. Also, if we look at these elephants' backs, we can see that there's dirt and hay and some other stuff on there. But elephants tend to use that as a form of sunscreen. Normally rhinos will do that as well. It helps them cool down. Another way they'll cool down is by flapping those big ears back and forth. And straight ahead of us, it looks like we can see that baby elephant getting some water up here. Hopefully we're able to make her out a little bit better when we come around this corner. Yeah. 
Also over here we have some of the Greater Flamingo. Now to get that bright pink color from the brine shrimp that they eat. Takes about a year to get that color. When they are first hatched, they are actually gray. And they will normally stand at about five feet tall. They will hang out in groups of up to 30,000. Also, is it just me or does that island that they're standing on kind of look like a giant binky? And a group of flamingos is called a flamboyance. Um, next we're headed on into big cat territory so keep a lookout for cheetahs and lions and apparently rhinos as well those are the white rhinos they're a lot bigger than the rhino that we saw earlier today they're about five thousand pounds Lucky for them, they are not critically endangered. Biggest difference is they have a more square jawline, whereas the one we saw earlier had a more pointed lip. A group of rhinos is called a crash. Normally a rhino pregnancy is anywhere between 16 to 18 months. When a baby rhino is first born, they will weigh anywhere between 88 to 140 pounds. Female rhinos will get birth every three to four years. We actually have three baby white rhinos that are out here on the reserve, so hopefully we will be able to see a couple of them out here today. one of the female cheetahs right out there. Now cheetahs are the only ones, the bigger cats, that will do their hunting during the day. All the rest of them will hunt at night. They can usually reach speeds of up to 65 miles per hour and about three seconds flat. And they're also the only ones of the bigger cats that actually don't have retractable claws but it helps them when they run. It helps create some extra traction. <laughs> Looks like we have a couple more cheetahs laying down right back there in the shade. It's always so cool to see how well they are able to camouflage themselves into their surroundings like that. Looks like we have three of them right back there. There's two laying down together and one a little bit further back up there in the shade more. Up ahead of us is the Kopi Rock Formation. This is where lions tend to hang out. It will be very, very cool if we do see a lion today because they are extremely nocturnal. They'll normally spend about 18 hours of the day sleeping, so the opposite of those giraffes. Now, females will do a majority of the hunting. Males normally tend to stay home and take care of the cubs and the territory. They'll do most of their hunting at night. That is because their eyesight is about six times better than. They also have... <clears throat> so the Lion King debuted about 25 years ago. Back then the lion population was at about 200,000. Currently, due to poaching, it has actually declined down to about 20,000. And a group of lions is called a pride. A pride will typically consist between 40 to 50 of them. 
And back there on the right, we're getting another look at those white rhinos. Should be able to see them a little bit better when we come around this corner. Now, if you are gonna be in the park for the remainder of the day, I would highly recommend heading on back a little bit later. Normally those lions will start waking up around sundown. Now, speaking of the Lion King over here on the left, we have the Warthogs. They are related to the domestic pig. They are burrowers, so they will burrow into holes backwards, leaving those razor sharp tusks removed. That way they're able to avoid predators. They can reach speeds of up to 35 miles per hour. The longest that those tusks will grow is up to two feet long. Also over here on the left, we have some female ostriches. We can tell that they are females because of those gray feathers. But despite those feathers and their wings, they are not able to fly. They can reach speeds of up to 40 miles per hour though. And I can also tell why they are over here because on the right, we do have a batch of ostrich eggs. Now those eggs are about three pounds each. A 250 pound man could stand on them and they will not break. They are in fact that durable. Takes roughly a month for those eggs to hatch. We're now entering Magadi Glen. Now Magadi Glen is the most recent addition to the Harambe Wildlife Reserve. It's made possible by generous contributions to the Disney Conservation Fund. And these are the Nigerian dwarf goats. They are from West Africa. They're domesticated as a dairy goat because they produce a sweet milk, which is sought after by the locals. Now they are ruminant, so that means that instead of having one stomach, they actually have four. This is very common in grazing animals. Giraffe are actually the same way. Those blue guys won't get any bigger than they are now. All right, well that is just about going to do it for today. Did you all have fun? Awesome. Well, if you want to see some more animals, I would highly recommend checking out the Gorilla Falls Exploration Trail. There you will see some of the animals that we may have missed, such as the gorilla, the meerkat, and even a couple tarantulas. And this is a reminder that no two safaris are the same. I would always recommend to head on back for another safari. If we have any wilderness explorers on board today, I've been riding the Simba One. At this point in time, I would take a moment, look around you, make sure that you have all of your personal belongings. Definitely do not want to forget anything. But once again, my name is Shelby Kay, and I had a lot of fun driving you all through the reserve today. Now around here, we do not like to say goodbye. Goodbye is far too sad and far too final. So instead, I will be leaving you all with Kawaharini. And now Kawaharini means go well. So Kawaharini, everybody. And have a wild day here at Disney's Animal Kingdom.